Hey guys, it's Nina Galina here and we're making Easter bread today. Even though Easter bread is made differently in different countries depending on their tradition, it is made specifically to mark the end of Lent because it's so rich in eggs and butter and it's given to guests as a sign of a good wish. The bread that I'm gonna make today is from Croatian tradition, uh, more specifically Dalmatian coast. We call this bread pinza. It is usually smaller in size and it's very dense. However, I have changed the recipe uh, over to make it softer and I like it a little bit taller, almost like panettone. The key with this bread is you need to use warm ingredients. From flour to eggs to milk, all the ingredients need to be at least room temperature. And of course you need fresh yeast this is the key and you can use the instant yeast however I've tried it before it is good but not as good so if you can go to your nearest bakery ask them about it if they can help you out I'm sure they will be able to do that for you just like I got mine okay so let's take a closer look of the ingredients that we're gonna need for this bread okay I've got one kilogram of unbleached white flour I have some salt I have a rind of one lemon and one orange. If you don't have orange, mandarins are okay too. I have 125 grams of unsalted grass-fed butter, 200 grams of white sugar, I have eight egg yolks, 86 grams of fresh yeast. I have half a liter of grass-fed milk. We're going to need some extra flour. I divided about 100 grams of flour just for kneading um, because the dough will be somewhat wet. Okay, so I'm going to warm up my milk. I will add the butter in there for it to melt as well. While my milk is warming up and butter melting away, I'm going to warm up my flour. So oven is on at 300 for a few minutes, then you shut it off and put your flour and remember, put your flour in a metal bowl <laughs> or the bowl that is heat resistant or you're gonna have a mess. So my milk is warm enough to melt the butter and sugar. So I'm gonna add the sugar here too. If you put your finger in your milk and if it's too hot to keep it in there for a few seconds, that means it's too hot for the flour and eggs. Okay, so I'm gonna put milk to the side. I'm gonna put my warm milk, melted butter, and sugar inside of this tray. I'm gonna add fresh yeast. I'm just gonna crumble it in here. If your milk is too hot, then it's gonna kinda scorch your yeast, cook it, um, and it's not good. Mix it around a little bit. Leave the yeast and warm milk, butter, and sugar to rest for a few minutes to activate it then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients can you see how the yeast is bubbling up it's very quick with fresh yeast it's very very quick our yeast is ready i'm going to whisk egg yolks pour it in here mix it up and then we're gonna add your zest add a good pinch of salt to your flour start adding warm flour warm flour to your liquid Try not to do it all at once. Runny. I'm going to switch from whisk to my spatula. Even though we added a one kilogram of flour to this, it still will be somewhat wet. Try not to add any more flour rather than kneading the bread uh, with the amount that we set aside. The more flour you add, the tougher your dough will be and the drier it will be. It's kind of getting there. See, it's still quite sticky. I'm gonna switch to my hands as I believe it's the best tool ever. I will use the extra 100 grams of flour that I put aside to kind of uh, finish off uh, this dough and put it on the surface and work with it. Slowly add, don't do it all at once. 
and it's very sticky. See? It's very sticky. But that's what you want. Don't be afraid. <laughs> it is normal. Scoop up the rest of the dough that's kind of stuck on the side with your flour. My working surface here. It's kind of even better than a tray. Keep rotating your dough. Try not to, uh, if you can, adding any more flour. Just to dust your hands a little bit. That's about it. Scrape all the dough from your fingers that stay there. Don't throw it away. anymore now I'm going to do a one more step room temperature soft butter you put a little bit on your hands continue kneading this will make it even softer more buttery melt in your mouth kind of thing So you do this a couple of times, spread it on your hands once, twice, finish off. It will definitely not be sticky after this, even though you uh, uh, put extra butter in it. Okay, there we go. I'm going to wash my tray and then I'm going to put the bread inside and let it rise. I wash my tray, it's ready. Uh, to be buttered up and bread uh, put in there to rise. So I just take some butter. It's so big, I can't even hold it. Put our wonderful bread dough in the smack in the middle. See? We're gonna cover it with saran wrap and let it rise. You can see our dough has beautifully risen. Just dump it on the surface like that. And it's gonna deflate. We're going to um, cut it in three different sizes. Two small ones and one bigger one. I have buttered and floured a couple of these um, brioche mold. It is not brioche bread, but I like the mold and love the way bread turns out in them. I got a nine inch um, cake baking pan um, and I have extended it with a little bit of extra parchment paper because it will rise a little bit higher than the actual height of the pan. Okay, so they are ready for second rise. As you can see, it's rising rather quickly with the fresh yeast. I will brush my bread with the egg yolk and salt. What this will do is give it a nice soft crust after it's baked. Easter bread still rising. I just brushed it with the egg yolk and salt. If you're going to cut the top of your bread, please do not do it until you're ready to go into the oven. My bread is almost ready to go into the oven, so of course I have to preheat the oven. I will be preheating it to 390 degrees. I have a conventional oven, so that's the temperature I'm going to keep it at. In case you have a regular traditional oven, slightly increase your heat to about 
400 degrees. We'll be baking it. We'll be baking it for 10 minutes. Then we'll lower down the heat slightly, well, not really slightly, to 356 degrees. And of course, slightly higher if you have a regular oven. Because I have two different sizes of bread, one will uh, slightly bake longer than the other. If you choose to score your bread, this is the time just before it goes into the oven. If you do it any sooner, the bread <laughs> will rise and go all over the place. I mean, the taste will not change, but it just won't look good, if that's important to you, of course. Here it is, I just scored my bread. Can you imagine if you did this any earlier than this, it would be all over the place. Now it looks beautiful and hopefully it will keep the shape. I love to set the timer so I don't get lost in the house doing some other stuff and forget all about the bread and it's gonna be burnt to crisp. So let's set the timer for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, without opening the door, we're going to lower down the heat to 356 degrees and bake for another 20 minutes for the smaller ones and 25 to 30 minutes for the bigger one. Can't wait to see how it looks. Our smaller loaves are out and they look absolutely wonderful. See how this is the part where we brush the egg and it's quite soft, see? That's because of egg yolk with salt. This part here was not brushed and it's a slightly, well, a little bit harder. Totally day and night. Here is our bigger one. It did rise quite a bit. I just wanted to mention that if your bread starts to darken quite a bit on top because it will rise, uh, you can cut out a piece of parchment paper like this and just put it on top to prevent it from burning. It is okay at that point in the second half to open the door and, and do that. After I've taken my bread out of the oven, I leave it in the molds for a minute or two and then I take it out and put it on a, a cooling rack. Anything longer than that in your molds, bread will start sweating, and that's definitely not what you want. Here is our bigger bread. Woo! See here? As you can see here, our beautiful bread is cooling down. We're gonna leave them uh, to rest for a little bit. When they're ready to cut, we'll see how they look inside. Here you go, guys, beautiful Easter bread. Uh, let's cut in and see um, how it looks inside. Wow, sounds great. <laughs> if... Wow, look at this guys. It is beautiful. It is so soft. Wow, unbelievable. It looks amazing inside. Let's try it out. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Look at this. There you have it. Easter bread. Soft, tasty, not too sweet. Absolutely the best bread you'll have for Easter. Please do try it. If you like it, comment below. And don't forget to subscribe. Have a wonderful Easter.